Right now, as soon as I yeah. find there, we are live. We We're are live. live. Things are happening on the internet. <laughs> You're one of them. Woo! What's an internet? An internet is a thing that's we're on, is what it is. So, <laughs> welcome, internet, to the Castle Mac channel. Um, wow! Here we go. Session one, right? Of Into Session the one. Borderlands. Session one. And yeah. the excitement is palpable even through the internet. So, um, welcome to everybody, but probably most excitedly, welcome to us us be in this here group of people because yeah. none of us own this channel, right? We're on the Castle Mac channel. And so the first order of business is to say thanks to Stephen, Lydia, Sean, Raven, Coach, Andrew, and even good old Jeff for having us on their channel and streaming this game. Uh, the cool thing about this, and, and it's to me, it's it's what D&D is and does, or at least what I think it should do, is we met uh, watching their D and D stuff on, you know, their Sunday night Strahd, Tuesday night Prince of the Apocalypse, and then Saturday night, goodness knows what kobolds to to all kinds of hijinks. But we met watching the streams and hanging out in their Discord. So that's where we all ran into each other. And and several Mondays ago, somebody said, "Hey, we should have a game," because isn't that what you say to D and D people? We should. Yeah. Have a game. And by golly, we got us a game. So yeah. what do you all think about that Discord and community? Let's let's show this those Castle Mackers some love from y'all. What do you all think about this whole thing? Oh, they're great. They're great. It's a group of fun people. Uh and uh yeah, I mean, not much more to say about that on my end. I just like everyone. Oh yeah, definitely. Here I say the cat's pajamas. They're people I want to sit down at a kitchen table with and play D D. Yeah, that's that's what attracted me is these guys play D and D the way I like to play D and D, um, which isn't to say it's the way it should be played. It's the way I like to play it. Um, that's one of the cool things about D and D is you play the way you play. Um, but so thank you to Castle Mac folks for having us. Um, our first session we did two Wednesdays ago, and that was our session zero, and we'll get into the recap of that here in a little bit. Um, and we did that over on Stump's channel. Stump, raise your hand. Stone hurt. Yeah. Uh, so thank you to you, sir, for hosting or streaming that first uh, the session zero, and also for uh, handling the streaming technical duties of uh, our streams going forward. Uh, and then thank you to Lyala Bright, also known as Sheena, also known as Likes the Villain, for some really cool graphics setup. Um, so really good technical support because I'm as technical as a pencil. Um, not guaranteed to be sharp uh, or functional. So thank you for you technical people. Let's go around the uh, around the horn here and introduce our cast. Um, I don't see what I'm looking at here. I don't see the stream, so I'm not sure what order we're in. So let's just start with um, Shannon. You want to kick us off? Who you are, who you're playing? I'm Shannon, Shannon Logic across all the internet, and I am playing Flint, the Earth Ganassi Ranger, who's got a seedy past, well, not so seedy as it is dark, and uh, apparently an absurd love for women and alcohol so far. <laughs> Can't wait to see what she does next. <laughs> Very nice. So, Flint, Shannon. Um, how about Lyala Bright? Sheena, what's going on? Hi everybody, I'm Sheena, um, likes, likes the villain on Twitter and in Twitch. Um, I'm playing Lyella Bright, a half-elf war cleric of Tritherian, who, uh, like her deity, has a love of freedom and inv individuality, and um, yeah. Awesome, very good, welcome aboard. Hey, Harlow, what's shaking up there in the great white north there, Ms. Misery? Tell us about who you are and what you're doing. I think you're muted. Oh, that's why we're trying to be polite. Um, <laughs> so I'm Miss Misery on Twitch and the underscore Miss underscore Misery on Twitter. Um, I'm playing Harlow, the golden tiefling with uh, a bit of a chip on her shoulder. She's a hex blade. Um, and that's everything I can think of. 
Awesome. Very good. Now let's jump over to the gentlemen. Uh, since none of them are here, we'll go ahead with uh, Pavel. Okay. See what I did there? Um, hello, I'm uh, Devin. I'm uh, uh, Ark Devin at uh, on Twitter, and I'm playing uh, Pavel Mansard. He is a human fighter, uh, specializes in the bow. Um, he's uh, a little smarter than he seems, which I, I think will come out soon. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away about him. I, I got a few things planned. So. Up the old sleeves, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. And certainly last, but definitely not least, Stumpomatic. What you got for us, sir? Hello, everyone. Today I am playing Henroll Stoneheart, a paladin of Ula, the dwarven goddess of hills, mountains, and gemstones. I am older. I have spent my last 40 years in a monastery, the Ruby Citadel. Recovering from a traumatic event, this is my first foray since where I shall be testing to see if the coping mechanisms I have earned are working. Excellent. Very nice. And I will be your dungeon master for this little shindig for this campaign. We're going to run every other Wednesday. Um, I am uh, in my, my kind of my maiden voyage as, as DM and 5e. Um, I started back when D&D was made out of wood, and, and I was a really uh, hack and slash, min max, hobo murderer to the max because I was 14 or something when I started playing D&D. And so that's how I DM'd. And since I've aged quite nicely, I must say, um, I've learned how to play D&D a little differently. And I'm really, really thrilled because we are going to play this right here. Uh, this is the Goodman Games Into the Borderlands. Uh, it's the first two of the very, very earliest D&D modules, Into the Unknown and Keep on the Borderlands, redone for 5e. And so that is the campaign um, that this group, uh, I think we kind of call ourselves the Castle Macalites. We'll play on words because we're new to the channel. We are their first non-Castle Mac stream game. Um, but that's the world we're going to be playing in, is that early D&D reset for 5th edition. And the world that it takes place in first. is the world of Greyhawk. Greyhawk. Um, Good stuff, classic stuff. So really excited about that. Um, so that kind of takes care of our players um, and the characters they're going to be playing. Let me um, kind of, I think what we could do is maybe a group summary of session zero. I'll give you some kind of details uh, from the DM's perspective. And then if each of you want to take a second to throw whatever you want about your character um, from session zero, that would be great. And so what happened is each of them was in their home region of Greyhawk uh, on Flan S, the, uh, the, the uber continent there in Greyhawk. And they each individually encountered a, uh, a bard um, named Elwig. And he was, uh, the Elwig was on kind of a mission to round up a group of folks for a little job, a little adventure. And so uh, he encountered each of these people. He was traveling uh, high and low around uh, the world of Greyhawk, around Flan S met with each of the characters in various uh, settings and circumstances. And uh, uh, Elwig managed to persuade each person to come to Edgefield, which is a provincial capital in the great northern kingdom of Erdi, um, kind of in the uh, northern part of the eastern half of this Flanes continent. And so, uh, one by one, each of them made their way to the Mug and Bow Tavern and Inn in Edgefield. And I think at that point, I'm going to turn this summary over to each of you uh, in any order you want to go in. Uh, jump in and tell me maybe a little bit about your experience with meeting each other and what happened when you did that in Edgefield at the Mug and Bow. I mean, I, I started off the session zero. Uh, and mine, mine's pretty simple. I was, my character was super excited. He doesn't get out a lot. And he unintentionally offended uh, both Flint and Harlow. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, he started off really good, really strong. Uh, yeah. I was the, uh, the second one to show up at the Mug and Bow. 
and immediately wanted nothing to do with Pavel because it meant interaction. But as everyone came, I sort of like came out of my shell, continued to be blunt and rude and Harlow seemed to like it. So that's at least one person in my corner so far. And also uh, Flint, well, I became instantly smitten by Kaylin, the bard who was to instruct us. So awkward flirting ensued. And that's what happened to me in session zero. Wait, so you didn't like Pavel? That's a, that's a total shock. I'm 100% <laughs> surprised. Um, well, for Harlow, um, after her meeting with uh, Elwig, um, she was seemed to be lucky when they didn't have a, any of anything eventful happen to her on her trip. She rushed to uh, to the new to the mug and bow, and uh, she was actually there before anybody else. She was just kind of sitting and ho- hiding in a corner watching you guys come in. Um, she met Flint and Pavel, and um, I love you. She was. Uh, I'm sorry. Not impressed with Pavel, <laughs> but uh, she took a definite liking to Flint. She likes her bluntness, but uh, Pavel, I'm I'm hoping she's she's kind of hoping Pavel will grow on her a little bit. Um, and uh, after meeting Stoneheart, she's a bit interested in uh, where he's coming from. And of course, Lila, Liala. Sorry. Nice. All right, speaking of Layala, what you got? You're muted. So Layala was the last to join the group, um, the last one to arrive. Um, She didn't really get a chance to meet everybody else like they got to meet each other, but um, interesting group. She uh, kind of stayed quiet because I was kind of quiet, but um, she's intrigued to see what happens next. And last but not least, our good paladin, Mr. Stoneheart. How was your session zero, sir? It was good. Um, Met the bard. Simple, non... Nothing happened on my trip. Uh, I was able to meet the group. I was quiet in the background, um, looking forward to meeting with the Lord and finding out what he wants us to go and get to retrieve and start start from there. Awesome. All right, so that's all five of you, right? We've got everybody. So basically, um, session zero began with them arriving at the Mug and Bow in Edgefield, um, a tavern run by uh, C.A. and Elena Greenbow. And they were given instructions to, uh, once the whole group was assembled, to go ahead and head down to the wine cellar, uh, storage cellar. And once the group assembled down there, they met with the chief bard of the manor, uh, a lady named Kaylin. Uh, with whom uh, apparently Flint was taken, uh, smitten. So, a little bit. All righty, we got drama right out of the gate, right? Um, and so, the, Kaylin, uh, her job was to go and, and just acquaint the party with why the heck they're in Edgefield. Uh, Zoe, or excuse me, Elway did not give them a great bit of detail other than Lord Thannon of the uh, manor uh, there near Edgefield uh, was putting together a group to retrieve an item, but the information was sketchy. Only the promise of reward, uh, of possible loot or treasure or any other things they may uh, acquire on their, on their work, on their mission. Um, and then a, a pocket full of, uh, gold crowns to make the trip to Edgefield to see if it will be worth taking this on. And so Kaylin was able to provide them with a little bit more information, um, about, uh, Lord Thannon. Uh, it, it appears Lord Thannon is, is politically connected in the area, a bit of an aristocrat, not really probably point, the right me some water? person to go uh, on any Thank sort you. of possibly dangerous uh, adventure. Um, all she knows is that Thannon was, was looking for a, a group of, of tough, smart, brave, courageous people, um, not all of whom may return. Um, but to go retrieve a certain item, and even Kaylin, as his chief bard, um, 
is not clear on what that item is. He really wouldn't tell her. Just an item of personal interest, uh, of personal importance to him. And all she knows is it's in a place referred to uh, by many as the Q. And so uh, her job would be then to uh, bring the adventurers, if they're interested, to the High Meadow Manor to meet with Lord Thanon himself and decide if they wish to take this on. And so that is where we find ourselves at the start of this, our actual session one. So is everybody ready for some fifth edition Dungeons and Dargons? Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Right. Let's go. I'm excited. I was just nervous. pizza too. So I'm having a good day. Dungeons and Dragons pizza. Oh, good my, friends. My pizza is on Times the way. Rich, my friends. Okay, let's do our thing. If there's no, oh, oh, there was something else I want to go over. Quick uh, summary, maybe for folks that are new to the stream or new to the Castle Mike channel. We've got some some house customs or house rules. Um, in this game, you know, the thing that attracted me to the Castle Mike crew is they play a long-term campaign around a table with a DM screen and a bunch of these little gobos right there, real dice. And so one of the cool things um, I asked the group if they'd be willing to do is roll real dice. So we're not going to roll 20. Uh, we're going to roll real 20s and 10s and 4s and 6s and 8s and 12s. Um, and so the party has agreed, the PCs have agreed to announce their rolls when it's time to roll. Um, they'll tell you what they got. Um, so we're going to use real dice. Um, also, at this point, I'd like to uh, award each player one inspiration, as is customary on all of the Castle Mike games. And that inspiration is not yours to keep. It is yours to award to another player at some point point during this evening's stream, you know, to kind of recognize good role play or some really awesome piece of something. So everybody has uh, one inspo, one inspiration that they can award to another player. And that inspiration uh, can be used for one uh, re-roll. So if you, you know, you swing and miss or you have a save or something, you could spend your inspiration to re-roll that roll. Which uh, critical damage. Just if for the yeah. inspiration, the coins on the screen. If it's in the upper right hand corner of the character, that means it is theirs to give out. When they give it to somebody, I will move to the bottom left hand corner. That means it's theirs to spend. Oh, very nice. See, technical stuff is just so, this is technology. This is about all I can handle right there. So thank you for that, sir. I very definitely good. didn't just spill soda all over myself. I'm pretty sure that did not happen. Um, Okay, so if we roll a crit, that would be a natural 20 with no assistance from bonuses or add-ons or the wind. Um, you get to roll two damage dice. We're not going to just automatically double damage. Two damage dice rolls. Um, also, like the Castle Mac folks before us, you can take a short rest using five minutes of game time uh, in action um, and count it as a short rest. And you can do that twice per long rest. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, one thing I really like that they do that we're going to do is you can drink a potion as a bonus action. So that, that could come in handy. I mean, not that you'd ever need a potion for anything that I would, you know. So, yeah, you can do that. Um, and then I do believe that people watching this little shindig can donate bits and bits and more bits. And we're going to do the same thing with them that Castle Mike crew does uh, for every 500 bits donated. That would be one divine reroll, one inspired reroll. The gods, the pantheon is smiling upon you. You uh, you have a critical moment and you roll low. You can, if we have any divine rerolls, uh, you can decide as a party whether or not to spend uh, any divine rerolls to roll uh, again. So, any from the party, any questions on our house rules? No. Let's play D and D. Enough yammering, huh? Let's do right. it. Yeah. So, session one, here we go. Each of you uh, awakens in your uh, nicely appointed room. And again, this tavern, the Mug and Bow, is at the center of Edgefield. Um, and you learned a little bit about Edgefield. It's a provincial capital, so it's part of this region of the great northern kingdom of Erdy. Um, Kaylin, you know, gave you a little detail about Edgefield, but not a lot. Probably about 15,000, 16,000 people. So a, a good-sized uh, burg for some of you, and for others of you, maybe more like a small town, depending on where you're from and what your experience with these things is. Um, you were asked to arrive on the eve of the summer solstice. So guess what day it is? 
because if you do the math, it's the summer solstice. And so you have awakened in your rooms, uh, each of you in your own room, in your comfortable bed, and it is the morning of the summer solstice. And the reason you woke up is that you can hear the sounds of frivolous uh, carrying on and general celebratory ruckus outside the mug and bow, because as your good fortune would have it, our inn is located right on the center square uh, of Edgefield. And of course, where else would the community celebrate its summer solstice, but right downtown. So it's early, the sun is up, but it's not up terribly high. And you are waking up in your rooms. Um, it is again, the summer solstice. And as you come, come to the memories of last evening, um, some of you may not be sure, you know, like, okay, is this real? Did I really come here? Is this a good idea? You know, so last evening's kind of coming back to you as you wake up, um, thinking back to meeting, thinking back to meeting Kaylin, um, and possibly the anticipation of meeting with Lord Thannon in the High Meadow Manor. I'm going to just throw out, uh, you know how we were talking about bits and donations? Zombie exactly. Night, thousand bits, two divine rerolls. Nice. Oh, yeah. Thank Zombie you. Night. That's Zombie Night. Throw it down. I'm almost 50, so I don't make really good hearts like that. <laughs> I do not Thank have you, Zombie Night. You are wonderful. Okay. Gentleman so, and a scholar. What do you do? You're waking uh, up. Pavel is 100% one of those really annoying morning people. He gets up, he gets dressed, he goes down super chipper uh, and orders some food. Okay. As you get down into the tap room, um, there's some bustle, a little bit different bustle than it was last night because last night was Solstice Eve, if you will. So it was rather uh, pleasant and fun, not raucous. And this is a nicer inn like we talked about in session zero. It's not a end of the rope, you know, scuzzy, scary in, you know, the, the clientele is more uh, farmer, working class, forester, you know, it's not terribly swarthy or rough. Um, but there's already a few in there tipping some, some, uh, some pints, if you will. Uh, but it's a little breakfast year. And sure enough, as soon as Pavel uh, gets downstairs, here comes Elena. Oh, good morning. Slapping down some breakfast right in front of you at the table. What can I get you to drink? Um, I'm not sure. I've never really drank beer this morning, but if it's the custom, I guess I'll do it. It is the solstice indeed. It wouldn't be frowned upon. All right. One ale, I suppose. And so it shall be. And she dashes off to get your ale. All right. I'm going to tuck in. And Castle Mac Lydia just donated another 500 bits for oh. a third divine reroll. My heart. Yay guys are so nice so we got three divine re-rolls we've been on oh. for like five minutes <laughs> yeah well wait till they see how we play and the new car smell yeah. wears off then we'll see where the bits are at like second <laughs> two may not so, take that long okay, so, so Pavel's downstairs what else is going on stoneheart wakes up he does his morning calisthenics and as he does he is having a discussion you hear him speaking to anora he says, yes, Nora. I know it's dangerous out here, but somebody has to watch over these, and it's me. It's time for me to go. And he listens for a while, and he's doing his exercises, and then, yes, sir, Brandwald, I'm ready. And he looks at a space where there's space. Somebody could be standing. He's, I'm ready. I know it. And Nora, don't worry. I have Abigail with me. I pat my maul. She'll take care of me. And then after, I will go down and order breakfast as well. Ah, uh, good morning, sir. What would you like to drink? Again, Elena rushes right up to take good care of you, just, just like an extension of last evening. Oh, ale and potatoes. Lots of, lots of morning potatoes. Very well, Mr. Dwarf. I'll be back with ale and potatoes. I turned my head. Potatoes? Is that, like, just a meal for you, or...? Oh, potatoes in the morning, it, it gives you fuel and energy all day long. Nothing better in the morning than potatoes. I prefer meat, but to each their own, I suppose. I guess Flint would probably be the next to go down. She's been up in her room all morning, 
awake reading her book and uh, going over the letter. And she presses the letter and the flower into the back of the book and heads downstairs to join uh, Pavel. And I'm having a brain fart. What's your name, Stump? What's your character's name? Stoneheart. Stoneheart. She joins them, or I join them. Elena thumps down a handful of ales. Ah, Miss Flint, top of the morning. What can I get you to eat and drink? We have a couple extra ales, assuming you might want one of those. We also have coffee in the hearth. What's coffee? She kind of, you know, curveball. Uh, it's something, a uh, hot drink some people like to drink in the morning to help them wake up. Some that take a delightful. shot of whiskey in there too, you know. Oh, I'll It's do that. pretty bitter. That sounds delightful. That and the whiskey thing, please. A coffee and a whiskey. Irish whiskey, if you will. Off she dashes in a swirl of aprons and clean smell. So She's you gone. really took a shine to alcohol, because apparently. <laughs> well, it hasn't done anything wrong, and it tastes rather interesting, so... <laughs> Why yeah, not start I, the day with it? I guess you're not wrong. After a couple of minutes, she whirls in, drops oh. the coffee on the table. Right in front of you, Flint. Off she goes. All right, I'm going to just chug it because I have no idea what coffee is or how boiling hot I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to hurt. Oh. It's hot. You know, it's been hanging over the hearth, so it's steaming hot, and it has a familiar bite to it. Uh, I seem to recall a little uh, drinking last night in the in the wine cellar that y'all partook of, and, and so a similar bite to what you were drinking last night. This is amazing. Why does no one drink this at every second possible? Well, it's Good, I guess, but it's not ale. <laughs> He's got a point. As you all are waking up and eating and drinking, um, you'll, you'll go back in with the tavern filling one piece. With people. You know, there's some music singing so outside, Sorry. all kind of in celebration of the uh, arrival of the summer solstice. Families are out, kids, the whole what you would expect if you had such expectations. Anything notable? You know, um, I guess the only thing notable, if you, you're from Rel Astra, large yeah. city down south of Port City, so you're used to seeing kind of a, maybe a, a swarthier or scarier element in some of the taverns you've been in and around. Uh, okay. And you don't see that, that's lacking here. It's like a different community. Um, oh, yeah. I bet they're somewhere, but right where you are um, with the official Edge Field celebration of summer solstice, um, you, you, that's what's noticeable to you. Is you just don't see that element present. Okay. So it's more family. Um, you know, there's youngsters. Again, mostly humans here in the city, but there are a few dwarves, some halflings, uh, some groups of gnomes. Um, hey. I lean over to, to Flint and I go, you know, you really stand out here. Right. Shin. I think Shannon's frozen. I think yeah. she's frozen. Yeah, she's frozen. Shannon, you may be frozen. What makes you say that? I hear you. Oh, okay. There we go. Frozen? What? Oh, okay. There you go. That's the same thing that was happening to me the other night. Why would I stand out, Pavel? Do you tell? Well, a um, few things. One, you look like you're made of stone. Um, and you look not quite as human as everyone else. Just, you know, throwing it out there. I mean, like, everyone here seems super nice. Not that you should worry about it or anything. But just uh, something to keep in mind. Well, what would be wrong with being made out of stone? I wish uh, I was made out of stone. 
that's an odd thing to say. Stones are typically uh, sedentary and doesn't seem that great to me. Well, I'm not exactly made out of stone, you know. I'm flesh and blood like you. Oh. See? All right. I, I hold out my arm and I poke it. Soft. Squishy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accordingly poke your arm and I kind of do want to squeeze. Weird. That's interesting. I'm sorry. I don't get out a lot. I've only ever really met humans and like a dwarf here or there, so. I've noticed. Um, Harlow's gotten up and come down the stairs looking for everybody. I hope you come in when I'm just like doing that to Flint's arm. <laughs> just like, whoa, weird. <laughs> you see them, uh, Harlow, around a table. Um, there's food laid out on the table. There are more mugs of ale on the table than there are people. <laughs> um, so you know game is on. And, of course, you're probably just taking in all of the hoopla, hullabaloo, what have you. I see you and wave you over. Uh, Harlow will give you a little lame wave back and uh, come over and sit with all of you. And... Uh... Oh, what kind of nights did you guys have? Uh, sleeping night? A good Was quiet night? night. Nothing. They're all in conversation. Oh, yeah, you you stayed up and talked to uh, Caitlin a little bit. It, you know, you seemed a little uh, a little enamored by her. Anything, anything fun happened? I'm just going to reach out and smack him upside the head and say, <clears throat> Pavel, my young man... I'm sure your heart is in the right place, but until your thoughts and talk is in the right place, please learn to shut your silence. Silence and learn. Silence and learn. Uh, the minute you like touch my head, uh, you see like my demeanor immediately shift to be much more somber and much more serious, and my voice drops, and I go. I would appreciate it if you do not touch me ever again. Okay. Consent. But we would appreciate it. Silence and learn. No, Pavel, I actually have something for you. And I take the, the letter and the flower out of the book and just hand him my book. This is a book on etiquette. Read it cover to cover. And this will help you. It's helped me greatly, as you can see, by my amazing interpersonal skills. I, you know, I appreciate that a lot. But I've got like, and I pull out like seven or eight books from my my heels, like satchel, and I go, I got a few things to read first. But I'll I'll keep you, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. I think this one might want to take priority over a few, anyways. But I can certainly give you some lessons. So on that note, Viola will uh, join the others downstairs after um, saying her morning prayers. Um, join them at the table, have a seat, order some coffee. So when are we supposed to go meet this Lord? I assume we're, we're waiting for Kaylind. I'm not quite sure. As you all are uh, having breakfast, drinking, taking in the scene, uh, CA, the proprietor of the fine uh, mug and bow, comes up, kind of thumbs in his bracers. Ah, oh, good morning to you, lads and lasses. Morning. I assume you slept well last night in my fine rooms. Perfectly. Kind of over, almost like you're his kids, you know, proud, proud to see you made it through the night. Are you finding everything to your liking this morning? The food's delicious. Thank you. That's wonderful. Very well. Can I get you anything else? I'll wait. Are there still more tankards on the table or there's yeah, there's uh, since uh, Flint opted for the coffee. There's one uh, tankard. I assume Lyala, maybe you grabbed one of the tankards of ale, um, but there's at least one. The one that Flint uh, might have taken had she not gotten. Okay. Coffee. I'm going to swap my empty tankard with that one, and I'm going to look at it and go, I'm 
Good to go for the moment. I see you last. Very nice. This is going to be a long day for you all, so don't get too deep into the tankard if you know what I'm all about there. Uh, Miss Kaylin will be around about uh, probably half past nine. And she'll she'll take you up to the manor to see Lord Thannon uh, pretty prompt as she gets here. So you'll want to have your things ready and be ready to hit the road about half past nine. If there will be nothing else, I'll take my leave. Any good day, good sir. Yes. Thank you. Good day, sir. Enjoy your meeting with Lord Thannon. He kind of winks like he does and <laughs> goes off and you just see him back behind the bar, issuing orders, taking care of business. You see Elena. Um zipping around taking care of things a couple more tankards show up on the table they're just kind of watching how you're doing with your drinks and replacing uh potatoes for a good dwarf uh, should that become necessary um what what time did you say kaylin was gonna show up half past nine okay and what time is it roughly right now probably eight eight thirty you probably have an hour or so to kill before kaylin arrives Okay, I stand up from the table, look at my uh, compatriots, and I go, I'm going to go shopping. Uh, I have never been shopping in a town before, and I want to do that. Uh, I will be back within an hour. I think I'll join you, Pavel. I uh, haven't been shopping in a long time. Well, I'm in. Okay. Uh, I mean, whoever wants to come, follow me, I guess, and uh, I start heading out of the uh, the whatever the hell this place is called again. <laughs> the Mug and Bow, and you are uh, outside now, and there is general revelry, uh, May poles, uh, but I suppose these would be June poles, given the fact that it is summer solstice after all. Um, games, food, uh, some drinking, uh, maybe some gift exchanges. There's a circle of druids um, at one end of the square having some sort of a ritual, um, and plenty of people. There are probably uh two maybe three thousand people in this square and if you picture the square is probably maybe a tenth of a mile to the side um so if you're a walk around the entire square it'd be less than half a mile but that gives you an idea um in the center of the square is uh kind of a green space with some trees um big mature trees the outside of the square is uh made up of shops and businesses and uh, a few uh, wealthier looking residents. And there is one uh, building across the square from the tavern and inn uh, that looks like it might be the seat of government um, there in Edgefield. So um, the square is yours. Always like this? So busy and full of games and- uh, Probably not. Uh... I'm going to look around for a, uh, like a blacksmith or, or like maybe a general goods store. Mm -hmm. There is a, like a mercantile dry goods type place. Uh, there are a couple of different stables. There is a smithy, um, all the things you might expect in a, in a town that's, you know, uh, maybe a little on the edge of the wilds near a forest, you know, there's, there's tack, um, there's uh, blacksmithy, all of that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to head to the blacksmith first. I will look at Flint and say, it's a celebration, lass. Join in. Have fun. I'm going to wander off. I'm going to wander off and like look at the games and just sort of people watch. Um, a lot of the games are about kids. So you'll see uh, groups of children um, sitting in a circle, hip to hip, uh, with with one child walking around and then they pat one on the head and start running. And then they run and try to get to the seat. The other, and when they pat the child, the other child on the head, that child gets up and chases them. And duck, the first duck, child gray duck. the seat of the uh, other child. Uh, Wyvern, Wyvern dragon, I believe they call it. <laughs> um, are there, you any, know, like, um, are there uh, any like carnival games going on? Mordenkainen, Mordenkainen. Let Xanathar come over, you know, things like that going on. Um, some carnival games. There are carnies barking. Uh, you know, they might want to guess your weight, or you might come over and try to lift something or knock something over. Dart games of, of skill and things like that. I'm going to go for the dart game for sure. Okay. 
So you will come up to uh, a stand and there are uh, targets. They're like, um, it's like a, a stack of, of straw that's been um, compressed together. And there are some targets um, of string that have been kind of rings inside one another. Ah, uh, morning there. What can I do for you? Would you like to try your hand at some darts? Some kind of big burly foresty looking kind of guy comes over, big tunic leather pants. He's got three darts in his hand. Sure, what's at stake? What's at stake? Well, good you asked. Uh, two copper gets you three throws and one throw in the bullseye gets you a silver. Hmm. And you can see the the bullseye is like some red, kind of a crudely cut circle of fabric. All right. You'd like to try your hand, Lassie? I'll take three throws and I hand him three copper. Okay. Takes your copper, hands you the darts, and he gets back almost, you know, like, wait till I get out of the way before he starts throwing. Kind of eyeing you suspiciously, you know, like maybe he's not sure, you know, how well you're going to do. All right. So Do you have a, uh, like a range attack? A range attack? I mean... Yeah, why don't you roll like you're going to throw your hand axe. All right. And I want you to roll uh, two dice, mm -hmm. two 20s. Two 20s, all right. Yeah, and you're going to roll with disadvantage. Okay. First off, first dice roll of session oh, yeah. one. First dice roll of yeah. session one. One. Right. Mark this on your calendars, people. I uh, I rolled a six. So your low is a six. So your your experience with this dart, you're like you know, and you go to throw it, and it doesn't go like you think it would, and it doesn't even get to the base of this kind of stack of straw hay background. It it oddly just you know on you, and you're you're perplexed at that. Because, you know, you, you know how to throw a hand axe, so you understand a little bit about uh, the balance of a weapon. Ah, first time with an arts, Lassie. And he kind of puffs his chest out. And a few people are standing behind watching, ah, 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 laughing, you know. Few Carlos looking, wandered few over and was watching as well. That was practice. And I roll for my next one. All right, 11. 11. You get one into... Uh, the target, like the outer ring. And he kind of, he's like impressed, but he doesn't say anything. Harlow right. claps her hands and jumps up and down and cheers her on. Yeah, and, and a couple more people are moving in. You know, um, your appearance has drawn a little curiosity, but not like, ew, weird, judgmental, just honest, you know, what's going on over here? Who's this curious person? So some people have kind of come in to watch you a little bit. All right, I'm a little nervous, but I'm more upset at competition than I am at anything else, so. All right, that is gonna be a four. <laughs> a four, so we're back to the dirt. And he kind of laughs like, you know, he has this like, I thought so. All right. Have another go, lass. He holds up three more darts. And I'm like, I'll show you how to throw a real weapon. And I throw my ax at the stack of hay. <laughs> Whoa, there you make your roll. All right. face palms. That is a 17. <laughs> you hit right on the side, left side of that bullseye. You didn't get it right in the center, but you're in the red. And he stands back, eyes wide, looking at you, looking at it. And he rushes over there to inspect his setup. And he pulls your axe out and slams it on the counter and slams down a silver piece. I'll thank you to be moving on, Les. This is a dart game, not an axe game. All right, I thought it was a test of skill, but I have my silver, and I consider that a victory. Good day to you, sir. And he, he kind of paid you to leave. Just, he paid you to leave. Clearly, <laughs> clearly annoyed. <laughs> I'm just going to come over and kind of hold her by the elbow and say, come on, let's, let, let's go look at this, okay? Come on. <laughs> these, games are, these games are fun. Let us do more. <laughs> yes, let's find something else to do. Is there anything else that interests you? Hmm. A test of strength might be interesting. Perhaps something a bit more than darts hmm what else is there i have i look around to see what else is there there's uh there's a a, a booth you can approach you see people carrying uh a, like a stick a staff a very stiff staff and there are big 
buckets of water, one on either end of the staff, and they have to carry it a certain distance. And the buckets are different sizes. So, you know, the smaller the bucket, the lighter the weight, that sort of thing. You see that going on. You see um, men carrying how many pieces of, of large, you know, round pieces of wood they can carry uh, a certain distance. Um, you see another thing with men uh, and some women um, throwing uh, like a large picture, like a Kyber toss at a Highland Games, only not so long of a of a wooden pole, but something maybe wider and shorter. And they're trying to throw it, um, you know, a certain distance. You see people, you know, paying to do so. Some of them are wagering. Some of them are paying to participate. That sort of thing. That log toss sounds very fun. Let's I pat her on the back and say, you go have fun. I'll watch. I, I'm pretty sure I won't even be able to lift one of those. <laughs> I run off and I'm like giddily excited about this because I'm just like, oh, so many fun things to do that don't involve possible death, I don't think. All the same, I'm still on the on sidelines just cheering like a soccer mom. Just come on, you got this. <laughs> so you come over to the log toss. And a large, uh, golly, he's got to be six foot five, big burly fellow with kind of a plaid, sort of a forester wool, faded and torn like a shirt and leather pants, high, hard boots, walks over, hands on his hips and kind of looks down at you. What can I do for you? I wish to participate in your games, large sir. And he kind of looks at you. Uh, I don't know if you're really uh, cut out for this sort of contest. You see that big log? And he points, and it's got to be 18 inches round and probably six feet. This log has got to be heavy. It doesn't look, um, you know, you're a forest person. Um, how about roll me a nature uh, check with advantage? So that's going to be 20. That seems reasonable. This is a recently cut, as in yesterday, six, six and a half foot section of beech tree trunk. And so you know it's a fairly dense wood and it's a fairly heavy wood. So in your mind, you're thinking, oh my, that is going to be a heavy, a heavy log to transport. Give me I'm a chance a to prove you wrong then, sir. Very well. I don't think you can do it, so I'll pay your five copper. And if you can carry that thing from where it sits now, 20 feet over there, and set it in that sawhorse without dropping it or falling down, I'll give you a two silver. And he, you know, his buddies are like, ah, you know, pat him I'm on the a, back. I'm going to jump up down the screen. I have five silver on Flint, and I drop my money in the pool. Oh, and who are you? I'm a friend. She's going to put you to shame. My five silver says so. Uh, I've hey. never been put to shame in such a game. Are you will hey, today. Hey, Stump. Uh, Lyala's in my uh, frame switched in the, in the stream. So. Uh -oh. Okay. Yep. Five, eh? No problem. He puts his five silver and he hands... Uh, his silver to one of the other attendants in the booth. Um, and the attendant comes over to you. I'll hold your money, Les. I'm the money holder. Fine. I hold the money. He That's doesn't nice. seem really, sure job's important. really bright. It is. <laughs> and he stands there holding the money. This one is Marco. Sure. This one is who are you? Flint. No, the other one. Harlow Laval. Harlow. Oh, wonderful to meet you. Right. All right. Do your thing. And they all kind of laugh. Oh, I really hope I prove them wrong. <laughs> so um, what are you going to do? Describe what you're going to do, and then let's make a strength roll, like a strength right. saving throw. So the objective is just to carry it over to the sawhorse. You got to get that thing from where it lays flat on the ground at your feet, basically, by whatever means off the ground. You can't kick it and roll it. 
and you got to get it up into the sawhorse. I would say that the sawhorse is probably about three feet above the ground. So, you know, you got to get it up somehow into the sawhorse. You know, it's kind of a picture like a V channel, two boards, right? you know, that are about three feet long. And so you want to lay it in there. All right. I'm going to go over to it, rub my hands together, do some stretching. They all start laughing. They're just like, oh, come on. That's right, Lass. Good stretch first. I'm going to get my arms underneath it and just lift with my legs. Not okay. with my back because I've heard that's terrible. Hit me with your strength saving throw. Jumping and shouting and cheering and around. Use, use your bonus. You know, add to your dice roll like you would in, D in roll 20 there. That is going to be a... Well, that adds up to a 20. Yeah, so you heft this log up, and everything gets real quiet. All the dudes are like, you know, because you're not a giant, burly-looking person, right? Nope, I'm pretty scrawny. And, 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 of course, in their world, you're a girl. This is not good, right? Yeah. I'll lean over to the proprietor. Wiry. Wiry strength. Oh, long tendons. That's what usually does it. But can she walk it all the way over to the sawhorse? I don't think so. Oh, that long, long 20 feet. Start taking slow but calculated steps towards And about three or four steps in, his buddy takes a bucket of water and throws it across where you have to walk. Not at you, not on you. But now you have to walk through some mud and so forth to get... Oh, I just lost you guys. Oh, we can still see you. We can still, yep. Oh, see and hear what you. What a time for my feet to yeah. die. Am I back? Yeah, 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 yeah we see. You. Okay. All right, so keep going, Flint. What you doing? All right, I'm going to walk around the muddied area because I ain't no fool. I'm not taking these risks. I got a point to prove. Did I see anybody else do them do that to other uh, competitors? There's some water here and there on the ground, uh, but it looks to be uh, fairly dried. Like you can tell that there's been some water down. So you, you're not sure. Hit me with a perception check. Sure. Lucky day 20. Um, 18. I would say that it looks wetter than it would be if it were just the morning dew fall. Okay. So there's been some shenanigans, but this is okay. a fresh, fresh batch. Apparently they're offended and by golly, going to hold on to their silver. Okay. So they all kind of stand arms folded, you know, elbowing each other, clinking ales. You know, one of them, uh, there's about six of these, you know, forest men, woodsmen running this couple of boots here, the, the carry the water and the carry the log boots. And, you know, one of them's off like roasting meat on a spit. So he goes to tend to that almost like he's bored and they're watching you do your thing. Onward towards that saw horse with all the determination and anger that I can muster. <laughs> okay. So you've probably added an additional six to eight feet to your Trip. What I'd like you to do is roll a d20 for me and make it a deck save. All right. Deck and we're just making sure you're doing okay holding on to the log. That is going to be a 17. Okay. You, uh, you're halfway. Uh, the, you're, you're still holding the log. How are you carrying this log? Are you just kind of holding just sort it? Of like or hugging holding it? it like, okay. um, like that sort of with my arms, just sort of lifting it up as high as I can and cradling it like it was a big wooden child. <laughs> and in your kind of sensibility, it kind of is. Right? I mean, really. Yeah. It's like, what have they done to you? Yeah. And so as you get closer to this sawhorse, you know, these guys are starting to kind of shift in and like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? You know, they're not liking this. Um, but the proprietor, old Marco, he's kind of watching you now, like almost incredulous. 
and you're just a few steps away from the sawhorse. Uh, make me a strength check. Strength check. Because it's, you know, you've had to walk around. It's a long walk. Yeah, not this, a saving throw. This, or a uh, saving throw, I'm sorry. Um, it's heavy, and it ain't getting lighter. All right, that is going to be a 15. Okay, you're good. Um, you feel maybe a vein popping out. You're sweating. You know, it's muggy. It's summer solstice morning. Um, but you got this thing, and, and you got it. So you were at the sawhorse. I think what I'm going to do just to prove a point, I'm going to heft it and lift it over my head and then plunk it down. Okay. Give me one more strength saving throw. All right. Big dice time, y'all. Big decision. Oh, big dice. Here we go. Okay. So that is 20. Yes. Golly. Yes. That's well awesome. So you see, anybody that's watching, you see scrawny flint, right? Stone child, whatever you want to call her, right? You know, slender, kind of foresty looking, skin colored like stone. She just like looks around and jerks this thing, right? Clean and jerk. Boom. You know, picture almost like uh, the uh, the Olympics and they stand there and lock out their elbows, boom, lock out the knees. And how do you dispose of this log? I mic drop that thing right into the, the sawhorse. Okay. <laughs> And I drop my player inspiration to her. That was nice. Very good. Um, as you do this, the sawhorse explodes under the weight of this huge beach log, you know, splits it apart, boom, and the whole thing just falls. And Marco's like, he's looking at his buddies, and his buddies are like looking at him. And Money Guy is like, like this has never happened before. Like when they've bet somebody, they nail it and they've never, you know, that kind of thing. And they're like testosterone went from 170% to 4%. You know, <laughs> blood ran out of their faces. Marco comes over and he uh, picks you up and gives you a bear hug. That was something else, lady. And sets you down and kind of like, you know, pats you on the back. And give her her money. And here's five more silver for, wow, that was amazing. And he's just blown away. Some of your silver to replace that sawhorse. No, that's okay. I'll make another one. That was worth every piece of silver. Wow. Harlow runs over and gives her a big hug. He's literally shocked. And all his buds are like shocked and everybody's shocked. And all the people are like clapping and kids are coming up to you. I don't know how to feel about all this attention. <laughs> I'm pretty upset because I'm off somewhere else and I'm not witnessing this. Yes, you've missed out. You may hear some some hullabaloo across the you know across the way. Um, so let's go to Pavel and are, Lyle. Are you with Pavel? Or are you with the other four? Uh, I'm with three. I didn't catch you. You kind of roboted out there. I'm with the other three. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So it's just Pavel off to the uh, smithery or the smithy. Okay. So your thing going to the smithy is happening simultaneous to that. So let's jump to you, bud. Um, you can easily tell where the smithy is uh, from the smoke. Um, maybe the sounds of pounding, you know, steel and iron on steel and iron. Uh, maybe the smell, that sort of thing. So you have no trouble finding the smithy. And it's the uh, the uh, Golden Ash Smithy and Armatorium Inc. LLC. Um, LLC. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I uh, I walk in. Uh, what's uh, What's the interior look like? You know, there's some some blades hanging. There's horseshoes. There's various tack and harness um at least the metal parts of that not so much the leather um typical things you'd expect and in the back there are a couple of uh furnaces um you know with the the uh accordion style kind of blowers there's all the tools there are two very large uh tusked 
burly, warty, half hairy uh, humanoids, uh, probably each pushing seven feet tall, wearing uh, leather aprons, no shirt, scarred a bit, uh, leather pants. Uh, the leather apron goes to their feet, high hard leather boots, and they are working and pounding and smithing uh, as you enter the shop. Okay, I'm gonna walk up to the, uh, I don't know, one of them. Uh, there's kind of a, a, you can't walk right up to where they are in the kind of the smithing or forging area because there's sort of a, like a counter um, that would separate. So you can't just walk back there. Um, but as you come in, one of them turns and, you know, he's got mangy looking, you know, facial hair and a couple of wayward tusks in his bottom jaw and he regards you and looks you over and ambles over. <laughs> what do you want? Arrows. Uh, maybe 20? Yeah, we got them. Metal uh, tip, stone tip, uh, metal shaft. Metal, uh, metal tip preferred. You got any uh, anything unusual arrow-wise? Just arrows. He's All still right, regarding yeah. you. 20? Yeah, in that case, just 20 uh, wood shaft, yeah, we- metal tip. Uh, what's uh, what's that run? Yeah, let me uh, let me see how many I got. He walks away. Kind of goes back Stone into tip. the. Um, you know, there's a there's a doorway that that looks like it must go back into the back um, part of the building, and he's he's just going back there to his player's handbook to see how much arrows cost, um, in fact. And he comes out with a uh, with a handful of these uh, of these arrows. Bear with me. Yeah, these here. Uh, and he sets them kind of on that table so you can look at him. He kind of stands back, and his English is kind of his common is kind of broken. Uh, these will run you. Uh, uh, eight silver. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, inspect them pretty carefully to see uh, what kind of quality they are, like if they're okay. good arrows. Um, tell you what, give me if you would please roll. Just a good old perception, I think, will be fine for that. Fifteen. Uh, sorry, fifteen plus two, so seventeen. Okay. Um, these look like solid arrows. You know, the shafts are relatively straight. Um, there's no, you know, the shafts aren't made with like where branches might have been. And so, you know, it's a straight piece of, of, of wood. The metal uh, tips are well fastened uh, by some kind of twine tied around. You know, they're slipped over the end and tied down. Uh, there's actually an edge and a point. Um, to the uh, to the metal tip, they're kind of those three finned, you know, metal tips that you know would really suck if it went into you. It's almost more uh, like a broadhead arrow. Than yeah, they're like standard. you know field nasty arrows. Um, the fletching um, is all even, um, nicely crafted arrows. Okay, uh, eight silver uh, sounds uh, sounds fine. Uh, I'll pay the man and take the arrows. Very good. Anything else? Headed back to my work. Uh, no, you uh, you do your thing, and I'm gonna head back out into the crowd to peruse the uh, the games. He just and turns and look for my friends. Walks away. Um, and so as you walk the grounds again, there's there's drinking, having fun, but nothing out of control. Nothing waterfronty or dangerous. Uh, roasting meats. There are uh, some people gathered around quilting. The druids are still druiding, um, but they have moved to the uh, green space, center green space around a single large oak, you know, and maybe the, the oak is there and they use that every year for various druidic uh, seasonal celebrations. And so that's all going on. And uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, 18. 18. So you notice, um, uh, you recognize... Flint, Lyalla, Harlow, and uh, Stoneheart over in the kind of the feats of strength, and there's cheering, and there you notice Flint seems to have garnered the attention of 
the one of the people running the thing because he's just picked her up and squeezed her and put her down and then kids are running up to her and you see this uh taking place as you as you go to the you know in that direction i'm interested uh i'm gonna i'm gonna wander over uh and uh, uh i'll probably come across maybe Ayala and Stoneheart first, because I imagine they're not like all up in the action. I'm gonna uh, walk up to them and go, "Hey, uh, what's, uh, what's going on?" Our, uh, new f- go ahead. Our new friend Flint seems to have shut up some local brutes. Oh, did they underestimate her? That's oh yes. Yeah, those look like the type. I assume I see the the kind of burly gentlemen who seem to be running the booth. Yes, they vastly underestimated her. Even tried a bit of, um, and she'll point to the mud there and uh, even tried a bit of sabotage. Silly, silly. She didn't let any of it bother her, and she finished with a flourish. Uh, I, I assume I see the, the the log sitting on top of the busted sawhorses. Yeah, you see the whole carnage. Um, you see guy, you know, a couple of the other woodsmen scratching their heads, looking at each other, looking at Flint. You know, um, clearly I, she's made a bit of a spectacle, something they haven't seen around here before. I look, uh, I look at uh, Stoneheart and I go, I can tell. It was a beautiful thing to see. And as you are all there uh, witnessing all of this, a uh, familiar figure strides up. Uh, your friend, the chief bard, Kaland. Oh, good wave. morning to you all. I trust you all had a wonderful evening. And she's kind of, you know... Crinkles her nose. I've taken it like trying to figure out what's going on. You know, she nods at the the head uh, forest woodsman who's running the the uh, feats of strength booth here. Uh, she kind of like she knows him, and he nods back. I trust uh, you all had a, a passable evening, then. Yes, a, a good evening. I hope yours was well. Yours was good as well. And the morning just keeps getting better. I, I start to like say something dumb, but then I remembered what Stoneheart says, and I kind of like go, "Good morning," and I look away. She regards you curiously, having remembered your oafness from the night before. Uh, smiles uh, actually gives each of you a bit of eye contact um, directly as she regards all of you. Well met. It is good to see you indeed. Uh, are you ready to go meet the Lord Thanon at the manor? And you notice she is dressed more today for riding and maybe even, you know, out scouting combat. You know, she's in full leather armor now. Um, and again, you see, um, well, I find it. There it is. Her leather armor has this, uh, whoops, let me get my insignia upon the breastplate, like you noticed on Elwig, um, the rune of the High Meadow Manor of Thanon, Lord Thanon. Um, are you ready to go meet the Lord? Yes, just need to go back to the inn quick and grab my belongings. Very well. Uh, it is time to go. It is half past nine. Uh, I have horses, and uh, let's go back to the inn, and we'll saddle up and, and ride along. Sounds good. I'm going to follow. Okay. So she leads you all back to the inn um, and waits outside while you go in to retrieve your belongings? Nope. I already have Arla my belongings does. with me. So I ask, are you doing dangerous work with the armor and all? Oh, uh, no, uh, not really. Just my normal work wear when I'm on errands for the Lord or for the man. <coughs> One can't be too careful. Almost a, a work uniform, if you will. And it's, you know, again, her features, uh, like I described last time, very delicate, uh, and everything is form-fitting. Um, no cloak over the armor. You know, she had a cloak and kind of a blouse, and then very form-fitting leather pants. Now it's, you know, more like the leather, standard leathered armor. No cloak. 
Um, none, you know, the blouse, none of that. Um, rapier at her hip, uh, longbow on her back, hair, red hair drawn back and uh, braided down her back. And so she just waits for everybody to come out. Uh, Flint, did you get my message? Yes, thank you for the, uh, the flower. It's very beautiful. Very nice. She kind of smiles. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like look back and forth between them, like covering my mouth. She ignores you entirely. Like, I will. Like she tries to look like she's ignoring you entirely, so that you know she's ignoring you entirely. <laughs> yeah. I just look pleased. She's glad that Pavel's a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, I'm not uncomfortable. Like I'm like grinning, like a like a like a stupid person. Like oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. But I'm just like, I, I, I'm trying to behave for Stoneheart because I don't want him to touch me again. By the way, I'm enjoying the hell out of this out of everybody. <laughs> just watching everything happen. I will leave a tip of two silver pieces with the innkeeper. Ah, thank you, kind dwarf. You're too thoughtful indeed. He kind of pats your shoulder. Well met. If I can be of any assistance... By all means, and he gives you a uh, a uh, an interesting little piece of stone, and it's been painted with a mug on it. Don't forget us here at the Mug and Bow. Um, it doesn't have his Twitter handle or anything on it, but it's like a you know a calling card. Um, and on the back side, you know, kind of scribbled on there, it says uh, Edgefield Square, kind of like you know the location of the of the inn. And he gives that to you. Cool. Okay. And then I go out and look disdainfully at the horse, but don't say nothing as I actually I will speak to Honora. Yes, I know a horse, but it will work. I can ride a horse. Um, are you the only one who went in or did anybody else go in the inn? No, Lyella went in as well to get her things. Um, she comes out and she's still not wearing her armor. Um, she left it off this morning, um, but it's packed in her bag and her shield is strapped uh, along her bag as well. Um, I, uh, I did go in to get my stuff as well. Uh, and I'm going to come out, uh, not all of my armor on, but like bracers and, you know, the kind of like, uh, half uh, like shin guard almost sort of thing of my leather armor. Uh, and I'm going to have strap my rapier on the rest of everything that's in my pack. All right. This is everyone. Uh, I've got, uh, horses and ponies. I have two ponies and, uh, and, uh, horses for the rest of you. And she kind of gestures at the smaller uh, in stature for the ponies. Um, is everyone comfortable riding? Certainly. Yep. Yes, yes. definitely. Yes, I've heard less of before, but I can't imagine it could go so horribly wrong. She chuckles. Well then, uh, we'll get you on your pony, and uh, we'll keep you keep you close by. She smiles. All right, let us go then. And she mounts up. Yeah, I'll hop up on a horse too. I will take a pony if there is. Since yeah. there's pony available. Flint, have you been on a horse before ever? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Mostly so, traveling on foot. You've probably seen people on horse a few times in the woods, maybe. Um, and, you know, there's a saddle and you watch your friends uh, mount. So what I think I'll ask you to do is maybe roll me a dexterity saving throw to get on this horse without a situation. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 19. That should work. So you get on the horse, you know, it's awkward and you're kind of like, whoa, you know, and the horse moves and you're like, whoa. Um, but, uh, you know, being a creature of the forest um, and a lover of animals, uh, you find yourself uh, quickly um, at ease on the back of this great uh, animal, this pony. Um, and you don't feel like uh, you're too much weight or, um, you're causing the animal any discomfort. Seems like that'll be okay. 
um, as long as nothing really strange happens once the horse starts moving. Like you've you've tackled mounting, Woo! got that part down. Step one, progress. <laughs> Kaylin looks at everyone. She's already kind of ahead of you on her horse. Uh, I'm very clearly at ease on a, on an animal. She has a big, beautiful white white steed. Um, mane is kind of braided. Um, are we ready then? She looks back. Yeah, let's go. I'm excited. All right, Flint, are you all right on on your pony? Extremely terrifying. Let's go so I can get off this thing. How about you, Dwarf? I wonder, do you ride much? Not much, but enough, and I appreciate the pony. Very well, then. Off we go. And so she leads you through the streets of Edgefield, um, and you're heading um, southwest. If you recall your visit with her last evening, she described Highland, uh, High, excuse me, High Meadow Manor as being southwest of Edgefield, almost under the boughs of the Adri Forest. Um, and so that is where... Um, you are destined. Um, so she leads you through town. And again, as you get away from the square, there's less and less um, celebration, uh, at least en masse. But there are, you know, as you go through some residential, um, you know, wooden structures and uh, straw and mud homes and things, um, there are people out, you know, uh, enjoying the, the uh, uh, solstice morning. Um, you know, it's a, it feels like a Saturday at the park sort of vibe all through town just fewer people gathered and much less organized celebration as you uh, make your way through town and you notice uh, several people um, wave and regard Kayland uh, it appears that she's well known uh, by many in town um, and so it goes and she leads you out of town and you uh, as you're exiting uh, the city or the town proper you know the residences become a little bit fewer and further between on, on the road that you're on, you know, a dirt road. Um, and it's a, it's a lane that probably four horses could easily um, pass in either direction, you know, two on each side, um, or you could go four side by, you know, it's, it's about that wide. Um, and it seems to be a decently maintained, you know, it's not full of big holes and ruts and so forth. Um, and it uh, looks like it gets a fair amount of traffic. And so uh, you go. Yes. Uh, as we leave the town, I'm going to like uh, have my uh, horse draw to the back of the group and I'm going to pull my bow and kind of rest it on the on the pommel of the hand of the saddle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start, you know, keeping my head on a swivel. Very nice. Um, you are in farmland. You know, there are some trees in Edgefield, but um, you know, it seems like most of the trees that are in town are in that square. You know, it's been pretty scorched earth, wooden or mud and, or stone and straw dwellings, which would be common. Um, and as you get out of town, you see smaller copses of trees, farm fields, farms, grassland, that sort of thing, um, as you get out away from the residences and the road winds. And it's, uh, it's, it's typical grassland farmland uh, going. And so Kaylin drops back once you're out of town. Uh, our ride will take us uh, to about the lunch hour, midday. Um, Lord Fennon will have lunch set out for all of you um, so that he can meet with you and you can eat and uh, learn more about uh, his request of, of your group. Does that sound okay? Sounds amenable to me. Sounds perfect. Very good. And she's taking you at a nice, you know, we're not uh, breaking any land speed records, but it's faster than a crawl you know with purpose but nothing out of control uh flint you seem to excuse me settle into riding your pony nicely um it's not comfortable you know there's that horse if you've ever been on a horse you know um there's that you're kind of at that pace where you're almost going too slow but you're afraid to go any faster uh, i forget the progression of walk trot so forth um but you're kind of in that crack where it's not incredibly Kind of, it's pounding the shit out of you is what it's doing. Maybe a canter, um, I think, is what that would be called. Yeah, it's something in there that's between speeds. You know, you're between second and third gear. Um, doesn't seem to bother the animal, but it's kind of, <laughs> you know. But as as the morning progresses, you seem to get a little bit more comfortable and kind of feel how the animal moves. And you can, you can kind of, uh, what do they call that? Posting? 
where you put your feet in the stirrups and raise a little bit so you can cushion yourself. You know, you kind of you kind of get that going. So um, really, the morning passes uneventfully. And if there's any role playing or questions you want to ask of her, now would be a good time. She kind of stays quiet. Um, she moves about the group a little bit, kind of just making sure everybody's comfortable and doing their thing. Uh, Pavel, uh, similarly to how his demeanor sort of changed when Stoneheart slapped him on the head, he gets mm. much more like serious as they leave the town, uh, and he gets very, very quiet. So, uh, no, uh, no RP for for Pavel at this point. Okay. I mumble to appearing to mumble to myself. I'm talking to. You hear me talking to Sir. Brandwald saying, no, we were not meant to be atop mounts. If God wanted us on mounts, he would have made us like centaurs. Instead, he gave us feet, which should be firmly planted on the ground. Nice. Um, Kaylin kind of, you know, she hears you talking and doesn't obviously see anyone. Um, so, you know, she, she regards you a little curiously here and there, but doesn't, doesn't seem to find it necessary to ask you any questions about that. Harlow is going to um, uh, ride alongside of uh, Liala. And uh, so tell me, how are you doing on this trip? What, uh, where are you from? Um, I'm doing well. Uh, most recently, I was in the uh, Barren Isles. Um, but I travel a lot. Um, we, my, um, and she kind of struggles for the word for it. Um, my friend and I, uh, we go where we're needed. Your friend? Um, yes. Uh, probably more like a father than a friend, but, um, he took me in after I lost my mother. Mm. Yes, it's always good to have people that care about you. Have you ever passed through Relestra? Relestra. I don't recall, but it could possibly be when I was younger. Mm. It's on the coast. It's a nice little spot. It's where I'm from. How does it feel to be away from home? Wonderful. <laughs> I was getting starting to feel rather stifled there so I'm glad to be on the road good hopefully we'll you'll get to see a lot more of this country I more hope of this so land well. I hope so as well and good adventuring to the both of us oh yes <laughs> I just kind of pay, start paying attention back to the road and looking around all that good stuff the lands you're passing through um, as you're on the road for, you know, an hour, two hours, you know, the sun rises higher, it's getting warmer, it's, you know, it's the first day of summer. Um, and the land starts to, to get a little roll to it. You know, you can't see, you know, along the horizon grass forever anymore. There's a couple of hills and again, a few small um, copses of trees, maybe some areas where trees have been cut, farms, that sort of thing, uh, typical kind of countryside. Um, and you're in your third hour and you notice the road is kind of starting to angle upward and you can see ahead of you, the whole lay of the land is, is a few hundred feet higher, you know, gradually in the distance, um, as you, as you're going along and, and, uh, Kaylin leads you, uh, quite quietly as if absorbed in her own, uh, thoughts. Um, you know, you, you can tell she's been on this road many times. Um, she's watching, but not paranoid. Um, you know, alert, but not worried, um, and clearly comfortable, um, on her mount and in this, you know, in this countryside. And as you, uh, you know, get to the top of this, um, and it's, it probably takes you a good mile to get to the top of this, um, what ends up being kind of a plateau. You can see in the distance some large, dwelling, a manor home of sorts, and some smaller outbuildings, maybe um, another mile off, you can see, you know, a couple of roof peaks um, as you're 
as you're cruising along. And you're no longer uh, seeing any farms. Like it's all, it, some of it looks to be tilled earth. Some of it looks to be grasslands. You've seen a few uh, like paddocks or fenced areas with some, some animals, but it doesn't appear to be like farm and home, farm and home, right? It's, it, you might be now in a place um, where this is all one piece of property, if you will. Um, as you as you move along. And for any of you that have a good sense of time or timing, it, it feels very midday-ish. The sun is, is definitely higher in the sky. Um, it's warm. You've probably got a little sweat going. You've probably drained a good bit of your, your water uh, skins. And as you, uh, you know, crawl across the plain here, the high plain, you come to a... Uh, a fence row and you can clearly see now probably three football fields um, down the lane that kind of forks to the left and the road you're on curves and goes around the fence row and off through the this this high meadow um, there are four um, splint male soldiers guards type folks no helms but male uh, you know armored swords at their hips and they swing the gates open and regard you all with a, just a curt, a nod and Kalen leads you through and they close the gates behind you and you head up the lane to this, uh, large timber frame constructed, uh, you know, uh, kind of a wooden roof, um, manor house, big sweeping porch on the front of the, uh, of the property. And it looks pretty large, um, pretty large house, especially the closer you get uh, on your horses to it. And as you get within, um, you know, 50 feet, you see a figure, a tall, slender figure on the porch, a long kind of a duster cloak, a blouse sort of a top, pants, um, standing on the porch, waiting, watching. And as you get to the house, uh, Kay Lind, um, stops, my Lord dismounts. He nods Kay Lind, he says in a rich, uh, throaty, youthful voice. Um, and you see, uh, Lord Fannin on the porch. And I am looking and trying to put a picture of him into chat. How about into Discord? How about not? Um, but like I said, he's got a long flowing uh, hoodless cloak duster. Um, he has a rapier at his side. And anybody uh, have any kind of weapon related proficiencies uh, for identifying the quality of weapons, anything like that? Which I was to just make about a, to ask that. Can I roll to see what conditions it's in? Yeah, why don't you do that? Fifteen. Okay. This is straight D twenty. So you've got a, a nice rapier on his hip. Uh, it is sheathed. The sheath uh, is finely crafted. There's gold trim around the top of the sheath. Um, the the pommel has gold trim on it. Nice leather wrap. But you, if you had to guess, you would say that that sheath has never seen anything but a drawing room, a meeting hall. A front porch, um, and same goes for the pommel, the handle. Um, it doesn't look worn like it's been practiced with, used in combat. There's no, yeah. you know, any kind of scratches or anything on any of the ornamentation, the gold trim on the handle. Um, if you had to guess, you'd probably say that it's a ceremonial rapier more than okay. a well-used weapon. Hmm. Is what she expected then. Um, Harlow's going to get down off her horse and um, uh, stand respectfully and wait to be acknowledged by the uh, by the man. He is in discord in the Team Wiley if you wish to see a, an image of Lord Bennett. Well met, travelers. 
Welcome to High Meadow Manor. I am Lord Thannon. Welcome to my home. And at that point, we're going to stop and take a quick uh, 10 minutes, bio break, whatever break. You need a bowl of SpaghettiOs, whatever you got to do. Um, so um, stream, we will be back in about 10. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show the picture. I'll show the picture when we get back. Very nice. Okay. See you in 10. Peace. Many. Oh, 
well. Oops. We're back. We're back. We good? Good. Okay, yeah, I think you got to unmute us. Make sure you do that. Hey, okay, so we are back, and I think we're going to play some more D&D, if that's okay. I hope everyone enjoyed our pizza discussion our live <laughs> yeah. mics while we were on that. My, my son is actually at a uh, he's 16 and he's at a Macklemore Kesha concert a couple hours south of here so I was just getting a couple nice. text messages from him because um, you know that him and his girlfriend drove all the way down there so it's kind of like yeah. but, uh, so far so good okay so when we were last hanging out, uh, you had just arrived at the uh, High Meadow Manor, greeted by Lord Thannon. Uh, we put an image of the good Lord Thannon in the Discord chat, and I think that uh, Stump may try to project that by some mystical means. Well, um, we will. School of Evocation, I'm sure. Um, and so um, the, the property itself, again, the manor house uh, is large larger than anything you saw while you were in uh, Edgefield. Um, it, it's timber frame, wood, beautiful, beautifully kept. Um, the home is probably a football field in front of the, you can clearly see the Adri forest behind. And it's almost as if the forest makes a perfect 90 degree corner. And the home is about a hundred yards in front of that inside of the corner. There are a handful of outbuildings uh, that are probably stables, barns for livestock and supplies and feed and so forth. Um, a few small um, buildings that look to be maybe uh, the 
the housing or the quarters for the staff, um, the folks that work, the, uh, the property. Um, you, you can see some folks uh, bustling about doing various uh, activities related to farming and ranching. Um, you can see a few more of the guard, um, you know, one kind of at each corner of the porch, kind of watching, um, most uh, visible. And Lord Thanos is, is on the porch in front of you. Welcome. Welcome to my home. Thank you for having us, sir. I'm so happy that you've made it. Kaylin, thank you so much. And please pass along my thanks to Elwig for assembling such a fine looking group. Come, come in. Uh, let us break bread and get to know one another. He invites you into the house with a bit of a flourish. Uh, he, he immediately smacks of aristocrat, well-spoken, diplomat, bureaucrat, sage, that guy. Right. I'll, uh, I'll hop down off my horse and follow him inside. Kaylin collects the animals, uh, just kind of gives you all a nod and uh, sees to it that the animals are stabled and, and kind of disappears around the, the corner of the house as you all enter. Um, and you enter into a great room. The home is, is uh, not extravagant, but very nice. Um, it's furnished simply with, uh, you know, maybe uh, it's all kind of wood constructed furniture, some upholstered, some not. Um, a few small sitting areas in this large kind of 40 by 40 great uh, space. There's a the big hearth at the very back of the room that, um, you know, looks like it's probably a two-sided fireplace. Um, part of that wall doesn't go all the way across. There's an opening to a, a space behind it. Um, there are some skins of large animals, um, kind of like a, you think of a uh, rumpus room man cave sort of, but in the, the style of the world of Greyhawk. You know, probably a couple of trophies that somebody killed. Um, some seating areas, the fireplace, uh, no fire in the fireplace. Come, come, let us go eat. And he leads you right through the room and into the next room. And in that room is a very long, probably about a, uh, a 14 foot wooden table, uh, benches down each side, a large seat at one end. And he immediately goes and stands behind the seat. There are places set for uh, himself at the end of the table and three on one side, two on the other. Please make yourselves at home. We'll have lunch, and we'll get to know one another, and hopefully I can, uh, I can answer all of your questions. And okay. with that, he, he waits. Um, he does not seat himself. Yeah, I'll go sit on the side with two open seats. I will sit beside Pavel. I will nod to the Lord and uh, sit on the opposite side. I'll join Harlow on the opposite side as well. Oh, I so, had my mic <laughs> on my microphone. I said, I'll uh, take the last seat. Very good. Once you're all seated, he, uh, he looks, and it's at that point you notice a, uh, a house servant kind of steps forward, a, uh, a young probably 15, 16 year old boy, and then a, a young girl, they look to be possibly siblings, dressed very simply, uh, step out. Um, Shall we drink, bring the drinks, my lord? Yes, please, and he regards them very, um, clearly he's the, the, the man of the house, the lord of the manor, but he doesn't talk down to his staff, um, like you might expect, um, very cordial. Indeed, please, bring us drinks. Um, what will you have, my friends? Pretty much anything you want, uh, mead, ale, wine, spirits, water, milk. Do you have honey mead? Ah, indeed, we do, yes. Please, I'd, have, I'd love that. to have one. Do you have this thing called coffee? I'd rather <sighs> like that. Flint, yes, we do. I would you notice some he whiskey uses your it. name. I'm sorry, Pavel? I would put some whiskey in it. She seems to like that. Ah, indeed. I'll Good. have water, please. Water? Good Thank dwarf. You. And ale is fine. Thank you. Pavel? Same for me. Ale. Very well. And you notice the servants are you know, paying a close attention, and whew, off they go. So, welcome to High Meadow Manor. Welcome to my home. It is so 
so relieving to me that Kaland has gathered such a group. <sighs> so you all must be wondering, what is it I could possibly want you to retrieve? And yeah, a little back. curious. It has crossed my mind. And that is another Divine Inspiration reroll. Thank you, Casmac Sean and Casmac Coach. Oh, and awesome. the Greyhawk channel before that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Shane. Coach, Sean. Woo. Sean, Castlemac Sean is like my bro and my son. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but. Brosen. Brosen. Stun bro. We're tight. Yes, well, we'll get to that in due time for sure. And the, the, uh, the staff brings the drinks out. Um, they put down meats, breads, cheeses, uh, higher end fare um, than maybe some of you are accustomed to. I wouldn't say it's uh, festival feast quality, but it's finer than the fare that you had at the Mug and Bow. Right, I'm going to aim primarily at the meat and, and mostly ignore... Uh, uh, all the like breads and cheeses and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Please, please help yourselves. And he uh, clearly just wants to wait and let you all get seated, comfortable, served, and going before he even tries to have a drink or anything. Clearly, the well trained, groomed, gracious host. Um, Harlow tries a bit of everything, but she's um, she's she's making sure she's on her best manners. Mm -hmm. Basically, all her backgrounds coming in here for everything her governess taught. 